like the previous weeks. Walk to remember, yeah. How about like the, the different messages you guys remember? Hmm? Ravis, yep, that was last week, right? Disappointment, prayer, spending time with God, yup, yup. So today we're gonna be talking about, it's okay, we're gonna be talking about temptation today. And um, temptation is sort of like a touchy subject just because I feel like um, not a lot of us wanna talk about it like on a casual conversation and stuff. But I feel like as Christians, we're gonna face it every single day of our lives, right? Like, in, in our walk with God, even though we are Christians, we're still going to be facing those, like, temptations. And the, the enemy is really going to be trying to pull you away from God. So temptation is really, like, a powerful tool that the enemy uses to uh, bring you away from God. Can I just say that twice? Okay. <laughs> and um, temptation is literally everywhere. Like, I don't know about you, but in your own life, you'll see it. Sometimes you don't even know it's um, temptation. And in the, the thing it says, temptation is a desire to do something wrong or unwise. And I'm just speaking on this because like, it's so prevalent in each and every um, day of, in our lives. And sometimes uh, it's just hard to like, straight up talk about it. And today I just wanna focus on the fact that we have victory through Jesus, even though we do fall into temptation. Like Jesus is there and he saved us from it and he gives us the strength to overcome it, amen? Um, um, let's see. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump into it, but like my struggle with temptation is sort of, it. I just get easily frustrated, annoyed. I don't know how many of you guys can relate, but I feel like sometimes I get thrown into like certain situations and my automatic response is like, Ugh! like I get easily frustrated. And sometimes you have to like control it. I think it's like self-control. I would say I struggle with that. But that that's just something that you ha I had to like try to make myself better at. And sometimes I, I find myself still falling into that. And so that's something that I struggle with. I don't know if you guys do. I don't know if you guys get annoyed at the little things and like when things don't go your way. You know what I'm talking about? No? Okay, just me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it just came to the point where like when I actually like received Christ into my life and like uh, had him as a personal interpersonal relationship was when I realized that like all these tools that we learned about before like prayer and like spending time with the Lord actually helps me in like fighting these things that come our way each and every day, right? Um, so that was just a little spiel on like what I struggle with with temptation. Um, so moving forward, just like keep in mind like those things that you encounter each and every one of your day, each and every day of your life. I can't talk today, I don't know why. But, oh, it's not working, it's okay. Uh, so the, the Bible first we'll be reading from today is Galatians 5, 16 through 17. I don't know if you, have, if you guys have your Bibles. But if you could turn to there, it's actually pretty short. We're gonna be jumping around in like the scriptures and stuff, just to like circle around the point of temptation. So it says, so I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not, so that you are not to do whatever you want. So I feel like um, when it comes to temptation, there's always like two paths, right? You can choose like to walk with the spirit or to gratify the desires of the flesh. And I think that's what this verse is saying is like they're always gonna be in conflict with each other and each and every day we're gonna have to choose which path we're gonna follow, you know? So just keep that in mind moving forward with all of the next points. So the next point is, Oh, hey, it's up. Thank you, other man. Okay, so why do we fall into temptation? Okay, so how many of you guys remember the story of Adam and Eve? Sunday school, you know. So um, I'm just going to recover. But like when Adam, when Adam and Eve like fell into temptation, from that point on, like each and every one that was born was innately sinful. What that means is like everyone who was born was already sinners, right? And that's why it's so easy for us to fall into temptation because we were already born with sin in our lives, you know? And another point why we fall into temptation is because sin and temptation look so appealing to us. Like, it looks like a shiny, I don't know, like eye candy, you know? And um, it's just so easy for us to like want to do it. And like, um, one of my examples is like, 
Okay, so I'm trying to get in shape for summer, but I don't know how that's working out because I can't eat healthy. But I go to the gym, like, in school in SF. But then when I come here on the weekends, like, I totally forget about, like, what I do back there. And then my number one, like, enemy right now is, like, boba. Like, I can't say no. And it's, like, so appealing to me. Like, it tastes so good. But then it actually, like, sets me back from the goals, like, I'm trying to create for myself. And that's, that's how sin and temptation works in our spiritual lives. Like, it'll look so good and, and appealing and makes us feel better about ourselves. But in the end, it actually is not is detrimental for our spiritual walk. And um, so uh, how many of you guys remember Judas Iscariot? Judas Iscariot? Judas, the portrayal of Jesus? Judas, yeah. So um, this guy, I'm just really proud. Um, but he was Jesus, one of Jesus' disciples, and uh, he spent a lot of time with Jesus, and um, he, Jesus was one who, like, talked to him and, like, walked with him, and he spent a lot of time with him, but G uh, Judas was the one who actually, like, betrayed Jesus into the hands of uh, the people who were trying to kill him, right? Um, let's see. So let's read from next slide. So Judas, this is a story, it says, then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, And what will you get I can't read. And <laughs> and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? So Judas right now, in, in that verse 15, he's kind of like weighing the pros and cons, you know. He's like, Oh, if I give Jesus over to you, what am I gonna get in return, right? And they said they paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. So Judas was his disciple, guys. Like, imagine being Jesus' disciple, like, walking with him every day, like, spending all your time and effort with him. And in, in the end, he, like, betrays you like that. He just wants to take the money instead. Yet he was offered 30 pieces of silver. And so, like I said in the previous uh, verse, there's always two paths, you know? Like, Judas could have chosen Jesus, or he could have chosen the money, like, his heart's desire. And now temptation, it'll make your heart's desire like seem more appealing to you because it seems like more beneficial to you in the moment. Um, but Judas later on, he like realized he messed up. He was like, oh man. But then it was already after he gave Jesus into their hands and he even tried later on, you see in the verses, if you read it, like later on he even tried to return the money, but the people didn't even want to accept it because they said it was like dirty money. Um, so guys, temptation will always make sin look good for you. Uh, but that's when we have to like open our eyes and see what God says is good for us. Amen mm, Okay, so how do we stop falling into temptation? How do we fight it? Um, wait, hold on Okay, so I think one of the main reasons we find ourselves like falling into temptation is because we we sort of place ourselves in envi environments where we get fed like different things and one, one of those examples is like the wrong type of friends uh, the people you surround yourself will always like influence like what you take in, what you see, what you hear, and ultimately it'll like influence how you act, how you speak, and uh, what you do, right? And no, I'm not telling you to like cut off your friends, your bad friends, or whatever. But I just want to encourage you guys to like filter kind of what you take in and um, sur or what's it called? Uh, like survey like the people you surround yourself with and see if they're actually like influencing how you act as a Christian. So right now, like in school, I'm learning this thing called pathophysiology. It's like one of my classes, but um, it's basically the study of like how diseases work in our or work in our bodies and like how it affects us and the manifestations of the disease. And uh, a lot of times, like me and my sister last night, we were like, "Oh my gosh, I have this symptom. Can you like type it up and see what pops up?" And like many times, like we'll have like symptoms and we're like, "Oh my gosh, what's the cause of this?" Right? So. That's the same thing with uh, uh, temptation. So like with allergies, it's like, oh my gosh, I have like this, these rashes, like what is it coming from? And if you figure out what's causing it, you wanna like avoid those like triggers, right? So that goes the same for temptation. Like you need to avoid the source of what's causing it. How many of you guys like watch Grey's Anatomy? No? No one watched Grey's Anatomy? Oh. Okay, but one of these episodes I was watching like recently, this uh, teenager, he came into the hospital and he actually tried to cut off his hand. And uh, the lady was like, oh my gosh, why did you do that? Why did you cut off your hand? And he literally quoted like verses from the Bible, we'll read it together. And it says here, we can go to it. 
Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And this is what he said. He goes, and if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to endure a life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. And I thought that was so funny because he took it so literally and like literally cut off his hand because it was what he used to like sin and whatever. But I think really what the Lord is trying to say is like, you know, cut out the source of what's causing you to do it, right? And once once you cut out those triggers from your life, it actually allows for growth. How many of you guys remember like those verses about like the vine and the branches and cutting? Yeah. You know, it's like that. This is so depressing. I'm sorry. This is not like my, my main message, but... <laughs> Okay, but sometimes we also like say we also we're also good Christians and we're like, okay, Lord, like I'm gonna be good, I'm gonna be a better Christian, and then but we also find ourselves like slipping, right, falling back. And uh, there was this analogy that I saw in like one of the messages messages before, and it says in Proverbs twenty six eleven it says. Like, the, like a dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. And for some reason, we always find ourselves like running back to the vomit and the way we said we wouldn't do. But it's like an everyday process, you know? It's not like, okay, I'm gonna decide not to do it now, but tomorrow it'll be easier. I feel like every single day you're gonna have to like fight the battle. And that's where walking with the Lord comes into play, right? Um, and when this happens, when we're like slipping, that's when we have to realize that we can't fight these battles on our own, amen? That's when we need Jesus, and that's when we need to invite him into our life and ask him to help us fight these battles and give us the strength. And with Jesus, it is possible, and Jesus is willing and waiting for you to call on him. Amen. And, you know, Jesus, he, he came down to, on this earth. Like, he experienced, like, whatever you're experiencing, especially with temptation. Like, he was, like, face to face with the enemy, and the enemy was, like, trying to tempt him to do something, and Jesus was so strong, and you will look at an ex example. I can't talk. I'm like, Ooh. Okay. So, what would Jesus do? So, um, when, you guys remember the story of, like, uh, the enemy tempting Jesus? Yes. We'll go through it. That's okay. So, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Yeah, Okay. And Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, and the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answers, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacles of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, saying, For it is written, You shall worship the, God, the Lord your God, and only him shall you serve. And the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Um, you know, when the enemy's tending Jesus, he was like sort of like testing his ability. Like, oh, you say like you're this, then show it, right? I feel like we see that in our lives too. Like, people always like test us. Like, oh, you, you can do this? Like, show it. Like, prove yourself, right? But to answer the enemy back, like Jesus always quoted scripture, right? But the thing is, so did the enemy. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's so blurry. I'm sorry. Uh, where is it? I think in the last line. But the enemy also said, for it is written, right? So that's why I feel like it's really important to know like the word for yourself and know what God's word truly says. Um, because people like the enemy are gonna like try to take the word of God and twist it, right? And manipulate it. That's why the previous message is where you spend time with God and reading the word is very important too. He, okay. Um, and the way Jesus answered back, he goes, it is written. And the thing is, like, that same Bible, that the same word of God that Jesus, the Son of God, used to fight the enemy's temptations is the same Bible that we have in our hands, right? That's awesome. I feel like that's so cool. Like, oh my gosh. Okay. Now, whenever Satan was testing Jesus' ability and testing his position, like, he didn't need to prove himself. 
and or anything because he knows he who he was and he he doesn't need to stoop down to Satan's level and I feel like that same goes for us like we don't need to prove ourselves right we know who we are in Christ so like what are the tools and weapons that we can use to fight the temptations is especially by God's word you know um, spending time with the Lord, spending time in His Word, reading what He has to say, it'll really help us like fight these battles that come every single day. And by prayer, especially too, like seeking the Lord, especially in the midst of these trials, you know. Because Satan can make sin look and temptation look so good. And for example, he said, okay, where is it? Oh yeah, in the second slide. He says, um, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all of this I will give you if you just fall down and worship me. Like, you'll get all of this if you just give in, right? But Jesus, he chose God's will over what the enemy was offering him. Because our own desires are going to look so good to you, just like the 30 pieces of silver look so good to, uh, to Judas in the moment, right? And so, wait, I think that's it. Yeah, stay there. Okay. So sometimes we're going to choose the 30 pieces of silver over Jesus. Or sometimes we're going to think the sin looks more appealing. Just because we could see, like, the instant gratification we can get from sin or temptation. But we can't really see the, the rewards that we'll get from following God's will, right? But God's, God's plan and God's will for you is much more reward, rewarding than this instant gratification that you can get with temptation, right? And even when we do slip into temptation, even when Judas did give Jesus up to be um, crucified, Jesus still took Judas's place on that cross, right? And even when Judas still chose the 30 pieces of silver, he still died for him. And even when we fall into temptation, Jesus died for us. And even when it's a continuous battle and struggle, Jesus is willing and waiting to fight with you, amen? So no matter what you do, Jesus loves you and he wants to be with you and help you. And you just gotta call out for him. Like the song, oh my gosh, that was such a good song. Um, what is it called? Came to my rescue and I. Yeah, that, that song is so on point with this, dude. And um, he welcomes you back with open arms, guys. Like, the thing with Jesus is even if you do, like tempt temptation is, is a struggle, it's a daily struggle, but Jesus is open, uh, has his open arms ready for you and he has grace and forgiveness and uh, you don't need to keep carrying this like guilt with you, you know? Um, so let's just open our eyes and realize that like Jesus is worth more yeah. than what what temptation and sin offers us, right? Mm -hmm. So let's do our best like to not fall into temptation and go to Jesus instead, like Jesus did. Like he went to G he went to the Scripture and God instead of like listening to whatever this what Satan was trying to tell him. And he deserves that because he loves you and he is willing and waiting to walk with you each and every day. And that's how uh, the the theme comes into play here is like. Each and every day, we're going to walk through our lives, like, facing these different temptations. But Jesus is going to walk with you, and he's going to be with you through it all, right? It's just up to us whether we want to walk with him and invite him into everything, right? Amen. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, uh, we just thank you so much for this night, God. We just thank you for this word that you've given, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that uh, something would have spoken to the hearts of these youth, God. And I just pray, Lord, for every single temptation, every single battle that we may face every single day, Lord. Each and every one of us faces something different, God, but we know that you are with us through it all, Lord, and that um, you will be glorified, Lord. And we just thank you for your love, for your grace, for your forgiveness, for anything we've done, Lord God. And we just love you and thank you for allowing us to have these tools and um, these weapons to fight the temptations, Lord God, especially for you. Thank you so much for being by our sides through it all, God. And we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.